to pee? That is not a question you want to ask yourself when you're old. I'm saying this because you and I each have a bladder and we are all getting older. What is required not to pee when you are standing on a TEDx stage and when you are listening to a TEDx talk? I studied this for several years and the answer is a healthy bladder and it's healthy communication with the brain. To pee. That's the easy part. Mammals from a mouse to an elephant. They pee for 21 seconds, no matter what their body size is. If healthy humans pee up to eight times a day, that means that we pee less than three minutes a day. So, not to pee. That is what we are spending vast majority of our time doing. This is what we are doing right now, and it is a surprisingly a very active process. As the urine fills our bladder, the bladder expands. The muscle in the bladder wall needs to relax to accommodate the increasing volume of urine inside it. But then it reaches its limit. And at this limit, it sends the signal to your brain to pee. Yet, at this point, we don't. The brain keeps the bladder at bay until the environment and the circumstances are right, which means we find the nearest loo and we remove our clothes. For you and me, it works, so far. When I finished university, I took my grandmother for a short holiday in England. Grandma did not prove to be a problematic travel companion, but for what I thought it's going to be a slow-paced holiday, it turned to be a fast-paced orienteering game in search for the nearest loo. When in need, my grandma runs fast. When I started conducting research in urology, I realized it's not the problem only my grandma has. The bowel and bladder foundation says that one in four, one in four of us will have bladder control problems. That is more than people with asthma and diabetes combined. And I am sure you know someone with asthma or diabetes. One in four Older, bladder, older adults in the UK have an overactive bladder. This means that they need to go to the loo more than eight times a day. But what is worse, they, their need is very urgent and they spend far more than three minutes thinking about it. As a result, they might not want to sit through an hour and a half meeting they might want to avoid social events or, like my grandma, no longer go on holidays. As we are all aging, I do wonder, is this problem going to affect my mother? Is it going to affect your brother? Will I have that problem? But we don't talk about it. It's so prevalent and yet it's one of the last health taboos in modern society. So my mission here is to tell you, take care of your bladder. The solution to aging and having problems with your bladder 
is that we can do something to help it stay healthy. Solution is in healthy bladder habits, understanding the condition, and I think, just for now, giving up space travel. Roman writer Terence said, I am human, and nothing of that which is human is alien to me. I am saying this because I want you to think about this moment that all of us have experienced. This awkward, embarrassing moment when you are flatulent in a room full of people and you are desperately trying to prevent passing wind. And yes, I am talking about farting during a TEDx talk. Why? Because that thing that you have to do to prevent passing wind is exactly what you have to do to train your pelvic floor muscles. European Association of Urology suggests bladder training as a first line therapy for bladder control issues. Squeezing and relaxing these muscles 10 times a day, every day, will help you with those wee bladder problems and it doesn't require a gym membership. In fact, as no external muscles in your bum or your tights should move when you are doing this, we can start practicing right now. <laughs> Squeeze and relax. It might also have benefits in the bedroom. Um, be good to your bladder. My 20-year-old cousin told me that happy hour makes his bladder sad. That is because alcohol is a diuretic. It makes you produce more urine, and it's a problem for those with an overactive bladder. Similarly, caffeine, acidic and spicy food and drinks, artificial sweetener in fizzy drinks, they might irritate your bladder, so you might find that it helps if you cut them down. Now, my cousin stopped taking his date to a wine bar because he was going to delude twice as often as his date, so it's a non-spicy Italian option for him right now. But the most important healthy bladder habit is to pee. When your bladder sends you a signal, don't hold it in, go and pee. Astronauts know it best. Here on Earth, you can sense when your bladder is full. But up in space, with no gravity, the urine doesn't exert the pressure on bladder walls. And without that, you don't know when you have to go. As a result, your bladder might expand three times its size without you knowing, and at this point, it's no longer able to pee. So I say, be good to your bladder on Earth. It tells you when you need to go. To pee or not to pee? It's really not the question. It's my way of telling you that bladder problems are human and more common than you think. Human body is amazing and complex. With the rate of human progress, space travel might become routine. And you'll say, virtual reality has no need for public toilets. But for now, I'm sure we'll welcome a pee break after this talk. So my advice to you is to live a healthy, long life, is follow the advice that your mom and your doctor gave you. Eat well, sleep well, exercise, and I am adding, take care of your bladder. You only have one. To do this, cut down alcohol and caffeine if it helps, but squeeze your pelvic floor muscles, then relax, 
most importantly, pee when your bladder tells you to pee. Thank you. <laughs>